Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 29, where you email me your questions. You can send them to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. If I don't read it on Strange World, which is on Truth Frequency Radio, then I will put them in here. So... Let's get right to it. First email is from Andy. He writes, Hi, Mr. Sergeant. I have just watched your two-hour piece and am very impressed. I say that as an understating Brit who worked for 23 years in Europe and the Middle East for Kobe Labs, which is based in Lakewood and Golden and possibly in Boulder, and where I spent a lot of time. You have hidden well your spiritual identity, but I feel that you are a Bible-believing Christian with a genuine faith in Jesus and are prepared to sacrifice for him if needed. I have been told to prepare and wait for something big, which will drive the common man into spirituality, just as you say and imply throughout the peace and which will be the start of the final end days. But this seems to be hidden from most people, especially Christians, or they just aren't watching or listening. Please forgive me if I am wrong, and please don't feel you have to reply. Best regards, Andy Neal. Uh, yeah, I not a big secret. I was raised a born-again Christian, went to vacation Bible school and youth group and Sunday school and all that fun stuff for years and years and kind of fell away from that way. I went to college and Flat Earth brought me back to spirituality. So this next one is from Greg. He says, Mark, have been enjoying your last few weeks of Strange World videos. I really enjoy the slides and have noticed a couple of things which I mentioned in Friendship and the Spirit of Camaraderie. The slide of Armstrong's flight suit shows the inside, the capsule boots, and the ribbed footprint. They, there were strap-on galoshes or outside walking boots that they put on the uh, on to go outside. The slide is easily debunked and maybe should be dropped. I love the slide of the dog. High enough to see the curve makes me smile every time, though I don't partake. Uh, I also noticed my Idaho plate has been dropped from the plate rotation. Would love to see it back in. Got to represent, right? On the whole, many satellites, many meteorites, no collisions, dilemma. I am a former Marine infantry officer. I had friends who were pilots, both of fast movers and choppers. They had a theory, the big sky little bullet theory, uh, to keep them safe while flying, I always chuckled at as this as I aimed my rifle at them, no ammo, just blanks, while we were on maneuvers. And we all know what the theory that the theory has its flaws. There's no way stuff has been orbiting around us for decades and never been hit. Stay flat, brother Greg. And yes, I probably will drop the inside the capsule boots and outside because yeah, they did have strap on stuff when they were going out. So sure, why not? I'll probably pull that one. The one I have not pulled many, that's for sure. And as far as the Idaho plate goes, the flat earth Idaho plate, I will make sure that it's, I mean, I know it's in there, It's but as far as, is, is it in all videos, including Q&A and Strange World and the license, I know it's in the license plate compilation, but I'll, I'll check to, to make sure. I, I will I will go out of my way and, and make sure it's not dropped or, or missing or something. Who knows? I, I have so many slides I have to move around. This email is called Interesting with three question marks. Hi, Mark. I'm a Christian who is 57 years young and a complete babe in the realm of the study of the flat earth perception of our reality. I use the initials trying to avoid any flags created in association with my email account, but I'm pretty sure that the simple act of sending it to your address will be enough to do that. Now, along with being a faithful Christian since my rebirth in 1991, I have also been a faithful conspiracy theorist all my life. I have always questioned authority, and your video is right up my alley. Thank you. I just wanted you to know that I finished watching They Are Hiding God on YouTube today, and when I attempted to create a new playlist, which I tried to title FE, but using the full words for those initials, the box became red, and under it appeared the words, Invalid Request. Hmm. Just thought you'd be interested in something I found. Very odd. And would welcome any input you may be able to provide. Have a blessed day and keep an eye on the sky. Jeff. 
Well, Jeff, I don't know. I haven't heard many people that try to create FE playlists and they're not coming up or invalid requests. I, I've heard some weird things like subscriptions being removed and videos being pulled and view counts being stunted, but I, I haven't heard of titles not being allowed yet because I've seen a lot of people create Flat Earth playlists. So, But I, I will look into it. This one's called Flat Earth, Flat Earth and the Matrix Breakdown. Mark, I am really connecting with this whole Matrix Breakdown, and I want to add a couple of other instances which happened in 2016, like how the Golden State Warriors were up 3-1 in the NBA in Cleveland and came back and won the championship on Golden State's home floor. That has never happened before, and never was it expected. Or who, when the Chicago Cubs did the same thing against the Cleveland, uh, against the Cleveland Indiana being down three one and coming back to the World Series to win it all, on top of the Cubs breaking their one hundred year curse. Also, I can't wait for the Flat Earth Conference. I've been following you since the summer of twenty fifteen. Just wish I had gotten the VIP pass. Take care. Yeah, again, the the highly unlikely is becoming commonplace. Recently, and I think they're they're trying to condition us. It's the it's the final conditioning before what should be impossible, you know, which is some sort of breakdown to this world, and that being you know an advanced civilization coming back, uh, one of the older civilizations making a make a re re uh, a reappearance. I it's that's what I'm betting on anyway. So where are we going? Where are we going? This one's called. You downloaded a La La Land. You downloaded La La Land. <laughs> Mark, please do not say you downloaded La La Land, especially when this is a new movie and not available for legal download. Essentially, you are admitting to video piracy. Please just say, recently I saw La La Land. Al Capone was arrested for tax evasion. We don't want feds or anyone else arresting you for video piracy as an excuse for shutting down your channel and views. Take care, Sarge. Jack. You know, you got a point there. Although I am in Canada right now, uh, more specifically Victoria, Canada. So I don't think the internet, I mean, honestly, I, I don't even see police. I saw like two cop cars and I had to drive 90, 90 miles or so to get to a flat earth function up on the north end in, near Nanaimo. And I saw, I think, two cop cars the entire time. There's, there's just like no law enforcement. Now, does that mean there aren't internet police? Who knows? I don't know, but but thank you, thank you. I will go out. I will buy. I will try to say, look, if I if I download a movie using BitTorrent or something, I will not mention that I downloaded it, especially if it's it's not out yet. This one's called "They're Using Us as Slaves." Mark, I think I have a pretty good idea as to what's really going on. I've always been a big UFO guy and read everything I could on the greys and even reptilians. That was, of course, until Flat Earth. But I'm taking another look, and I discovered it all adds up. Have you ever heard of David Eckhard and his family? Lon Strickler was just on Fade to Black talking about David Eckhard, and apparently during his abductions... He is always in an earth-based setting, usually underground or caves, where there are also thousands of other humans being used as slaves. So I believe the so-called greys are behind the dome and are not extraterrestrials, or perhaps they are. Either way, they're behind it all, and I think the Flat Earth community needs to work together with the UFO community to figure out what's up. I think the greys may be living underground and are using high technology to manipulate and control us. For what reason? I don't know. It truly is a strange world, isn't it? Ha ha ha! Smiley face. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's hard to say because there are so many different factions. There's so many different types of UFOs that have been flying around, and I have been quick to say that again. Get a pair of night vision binoculars and look up there yourself. There's a lot of stuff flying around, and, there, and when you look over history, they've been there since the beginning they've been there as long as we've been there. So are we slaves? Yeah, I don't know. Don't know. I don't know if I, I go along the slides. Now, are the greys the the highest ranking group? No, not a chance. They're they're more of a drone species than, than anything else. But look up all the fun stuff that's out there when it comes to UFOs. And don't forget the 1561 Nuremberg event. If, you know, Look up the wiki entry for that. It's fascinating. This one's called Some Stuff You Can Use from Tim. Mark, first off, you duh man. You actually put in duh. Hoagland bailed out of the debate because of you, no doubt. Man, I was drooling, waiting for it. I don't know. 
debating Richard Hoagland, I don't think it would have been that fun, to be honest. Here's some facts to help you with the so-called scientific types, like the guy who defended the Earth core gobstopper model with the fact that humans only have drilled eight miles. These instruments they use are assumptive. Assumptive? Is that a word? Because they have no factual basis on which to build the instrument. All real instruments of measure have a known base such as temperature, BTUs, or battery acid based on their relationship to water, a known base. The same principle applies to their so-called radiocarbon dating methods, which never agree, hence a pseudoscience. I recall a guy who tried to use solar flares and their ability to measure precise speed, temperature, and blah blah blah. When in fact, they're all estimations proven by NASA, so-called so KP index chart, and the Karuna, NASA's Sweden counterpart. I did not know they had a Sweden counterpart called Karuna, K-I-R-U-N-A. After a solar eruption, neither ever, never, e wow, I'm reading this as is, guys, so use grammar checker or spell checker or something on anything, a not the time of arrival speed, density, heat, stress to Earth's magnetic shield, nothing. Ben Davidson, a NASA sellout posing as the opposition, has openly stated many times that these measurements are and can be estimations. I watched NASA space weather, no pun intended, religiously for years. Thanks for unplugging me, Morpheus. Oh, that's, don't call me Morpheus. And keep up the good work. You definitely have the knack. Not to be confused with the 1970s band the neck. He didn't say that. I didn't. One thing I don't hear much about from you is air pressure. We live in a measurable environment of 14.7 pounds per square inch at sea level, which explains all of the anomalies of so-called gravity, such as balloons ascending, small magnets defying, bugs and birds flying. Quite simply, any school kid can tell you that you have to be in a pressurized system. It needs to be sealed, which is why I accept the dome. Yeah. It's, it's one of the reasons, and I know, I, I've seen your emails in there, especially after the last interview I did, emails and comments where they say, oh, do you have to mention the dome? It's not proven that's a dome. I was like, the, I go with the dome for several reasons. One, the majority, and if it's 70, 30, 80, 20, believe in the dome. And the, one of the big reasons is because of the air pressure question. You, if you believe in an infinite plane without a dome, you're still going to have to deal, deal with the air pressure question, which is, the, the big one is, if you have a vacuum of space and you have an atmosphere, how is the atmosphere not being ripped off into the, the vacuum of space? What is stopping it? The dome is an easy way to get around that problem. If you don't have a, a, a some sort of dome-like structure, then you're going to have to, you've got to come up with an alternative. How do you explain it? Because that's... Right now, that's what we're going with. So I, while I appreciate people saying, well, you know, you shouldn't say it's dumb. That, that's the model I'm preaching. That's what I'm going with. And from what I can tell, the majority goes along with the dome model. Yes, there is a you know amount of people that go along with infinite plane with no dome. Fine. I don't, I, I don't also say that there isn't anything beyond the dome. If, if there's more land beyond the dome, then great. Fantastic. I I. Don't discount that at all. I'm just saying that the dome really solves a whole bunch of problems simultaneously. Just me, though. Well, me and a whole bunch of other people. This one's called Flat Earth in Classic Movies. Hey, Mark, I was recently watching an amazing film after I had friends for years demanding me to seriously watch Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Now, you guys look up. The, that's the uh, Martin Sheen Vietnam War movie, which was directed by Francis Ford Coppola. Who happens to be Nicolas Cage's uncle? And Nicolas Cage changed his name so that he could wouldn't have necessarily be tied to nepotism in Hollywood. A little, little trivia there for you. I wanted to put this out there into the internet hive mind, the whole premise of this film. It was an MK Ultra agent, Martin Sheen, was trying to figure out what could have caused a highly respected general to go, I don't think it was a general, I think it was a colonel, so, you know, against his own country. Well, around the end of the film, after Martin is released from cat captivity, the reporter that idolizes the wacko general, as Marlon Brando starts reading his thoughts, the reporter starts going into a rant about flat earth. Maybe it could have been used for more, more ammunition. Keep up the good fight for truth, Sergeant Franklin Lugo. Lugo, L-U-G-O. I did not know that there was a flat earth reference in Apocalypse Now. Somebody find me the, the timestamp on that and... 
I would love to I'd love to check it out. So Flat Earth Rants and going all the way back to Apocalypse Now. That's great. This one's called Flat Earth Experiment Help. Hello, Mark. I want to start off by saying thank you for what you did for me and many other people by opening our eyes to the BS by having an idea about trying to show water cannot stay on a ball and wonder if you have time to Skype or call. Not easy to explain over text. Uh, to see if you had any advice or information I might have missed. And he gives me, his, and his name's Michael. And I, I may have to get flatter. I don't know how you're going to pull that off, but I will I will get a hold of him and see what see if you can do anything with water on a ball. This one's called, I was unsubscribed automatically hmm. from your channel. Hi, Mark. It's Mustafa here. I hope you're doing well. I just realized it's been two weeks since I've been unsubscribed from your channel. Today, I was watching you on Flat Earth and other hot potatoes and heard you talk about the recent videos you posted. Went to my subscribe channels to find out that I was no longer subscribed to you for some reason. You may want to let your users know to make sure that they are subscribed. Good luck and keep up the good work. I've got to go and need to catch up a whole two weeks of your videos. Well, yeah, if it was recently two weeks, it's a whole bunch. I haven't had many people mention that to me, but yeah, by all means, go check to see if you're subscribed to me or not. Um, I know what happens to some people. I, I, I I'm not gonna downplay that. I, I'm sure, I'm sure it does happen. It hasn't really happened to me so much, from what I can tell. I, I noticed that I've accidentally unsubscribed to people. You know, when you're just kind of, if you're tired late at night, you want to subscribe to some, unsubscribe to somebody. You just click on the one next to it accidentally. That, that could have been what happened. I don't know. Maybe there was somebody in the M's that was close to me. Who knows? This one's called Oregon Coast Flat Earth Graffiti. Hey, Mark, I'm from Vancouver, but recently I went to camp along the Oregon coast and a brilliant idea came to me. The result speaks for itself. I also took a video, which I included in this email. Let me know if you can open it and reply would be awesome. I know you're busy, but I listen to literally every video you have ever posted up since December of 2015, so it'd be cool to know you received this. Yes, I did. I wrote him back, and, and I said I'm going to use it. What he did was he, he writes in big letters, flat earth, and some sort of variation of flat earth in the sand when, you, when, you, when you're on the beach, on a coastline with not a lot of people, and it's easy to write on, you know, that hard, hard sort of wet sand. And it was really it was a cool little video. I've already included it in some of my, my things, and I've, the slide, the, the still shot, I've already included that, that still shot in, in some of my stuff. So thank you very much for that. That's fantastic. He ended that with hashtag NASA lies. So great. This one's called Flat Earth Bates Motel. Hi, Mark. I appreciate all that you have done for the Flat Earth Movement. This may be nothing, but we are most definitely starting to see many mentions of the Flat Earth and the Ball Earth in mainstream movies, television shows, and media alike. Most recently in the newest episode of Bates Motel titled Hidden on AMC, Norman Bates does some upkeep of his mother's room and oddly enough walks around with a globe earth in a box for about five minutes, it seems, until he throws it in the trash. Like I said, it may be nothing, but I find it really weird. Thanks, Mark. Ricky P. Sure. I mean, writers every writers writers get inspiration from from other writers and other shows. So if there's flat Earth stuff and they want to sneak it in, writers are you know very clever at doing that. And the question is, were the writers told to do that? I don't know. This one's called a question. Hey, Mark, just a brief question if you'd care to address it. You have mentioned the enclosure firmament and its possible relation to high atmospheric nuclear testing, one of which tests was named Operation Fishbowl, which might imply a testing of the enclosure's location and boundaries. One thing disturbs me about this scenario. Were the scientists who performed the testing confident that it would not break through the bubble with catastrophic consequences? If they were authentically confident, what data had they acquired prior to the testing that assured them that it would not be disastrous? That is, did they somehow obtain basic data about the bowl's structure and durability, which permitted them to test it in good faith and honest ethics? If so... I wonder what exactly they may have found out the bowl before they tested it. Any of your thoughts on this issue would be much appreciated. Thanks. Best regards. Stephen Bastach. B-A-S-T-A-S-C-H. Yes, yeah, Steve. 
when it comes to you know testing out the the firmament of course that's what men are going to do if there's a way of breaking through this thing why why not look you're inside a fence you're inside an enclosure anybody's going to test the boundaries of this thing no no of course they didn't know what what would happen but i and i'm one of those guys that believes in atomic tests because there was the rumor which i love which was when they were doing the first atomic test that the trinity test which was one of the physicists said well there's a chance, you know, that this thing could ignite the atmosphere and, and kill all life on Earth, as you know it. And another scientist said, well, how would we get in trouble for that exactly? Because <laughs> if you kill everybody, including themselves, there's no nobody to punish you. So same sort of thing applies here. Yeah, if you break through the dome and it turns out to be water or weird gas or space or whatever it is and everybody dies or it causes horrible, horrible effects, Who's going to be accountable? Who's going to tell? You, you're not. Who's going to be punished? How are they going to be punished? Men are going to take the chance. When you get in that position, there's lots of men that are going to take take the chance. This one's called Professor debates former students on flat Earth and fails. How weird! I was just wondering what you were up to these days, and then I went to YouTube, and this literally popped up on my screen: the law of attraction at work. And that was a video I made a little while ago of that title, Professor Debates Former Students. Some, some professor, an astrophysicist at Indiana University, or variation of Indiana U University, got a hold of some of his students in a chat log, and they were trying to tell him about Flat Earth, and he was trying to shoot him down. And he was arrogant enough to post it online and saying how he failed to convince them that the Earth was round. And he put the question out there at the end of his article to anyone. It's like, look, could I have done anything different here to convince him? And, and there was a lot, a lot of comments, you know, both from flat earthers and and non and globalists. So it's interesting article. I, I recommend people listen to it. And it's actually got some decent traction on my channel already. It's called Professor Debates Former Students on Flat Earth and Fails. You're going to have to turn the volume up for whatever reason. I, when I recorded it, the, the volume wasn't as, as high and I don't sometimes that happens in processing it's not like I'm using a different microphone or anything anyway moving on this one's called flat earth society and it's from brainwash effect he goes hello mark I want to ask you if, if you have anything to do with the flat earth society many flat earthers say they do not like the flat earth society because they are supposed supposed controlled opposition do you think TFES is a distraction, or would you say you are a part of it? Ye well, okay, it is a distraction, and I said this in one of my first clues. The the very first Flat Earth Society, and I I you know paid my twenty bucks or whatever it was, and got my card and my little certificate, and I think the last names uh, the guy was Shenton. He was out of Hong Kong, and and it was down for a while. Eric was I think part of that group. And he, he broke off from it, and they closed shop because he took so many guys with him. So did, was I part of it? Yeah, yeah, I was. But I, was it part of it? And I said this in the clues, the, the one of the early clues I did, the fact that I think the first one, which they, they had people at the door basically telling people to go away, which I thought was interesting. If you want to troll, if you're like a professional troll and take pride in trolling, which I don't endorse, you could go into YouTube and, and it's Christmas every day. You could troll people literally all day, every day, forever on, on YouTube. But these guys were hanging out in a very small group, uh, otherwise known as the Flat Earth Society, not to be confused with the International Flat Earth Research Society. And they were just telling people to go away, saying, look, it's not serious. Nobody's serious. Go away. And fascinating because... Uh, it was you know, what why would you do that why would you have guys that would dedicate you know what dedicate troll for you know i don't think there were even 500 members active members at the time of, of that group so i just use it as reference i don't think in fact it's funny because i just about everybody in the flat earth community right now has nothing to do with any society it's just a grassroots movement that that's based mostly on youtube so anyway moving on this one's called Flat Earth Paraphernalia. Hi, Mark. Just want to say hello and thank you for everything you've done and for everything you are doing for our community. I've attached a couple of pictures showing off some Flat Earth Paraphernalia that I recent, recently purchased. Two shirts and an AE map sticker for my truck. Feel free to feature my proud Flat Earth face in any of your slideshows so long as you can read the shirt. Keep it up and God bless. 
Dennis Marquecas. Excellent. Yeah, I'm going to use that shirt picture. I'm probably not going to. I mean, it'll be in the slideshow, but I don't think it'll be in this one. Next one is called real location of the ISS. Mark is the real location of the ISS at the neutral buoyancy lab. And they just film spacewalks underwater with the lights off? Or do they have another full scale ISS model someplace underwater where they film their spacewalks? Tough to say. Some of it is done in a zero G simulator. Some of it is probably done underwater or another lab. I don't know where, where they're doing all their ISS footage in studio somewhere though. Not sure. This one's called Abyssal Plain. Dear Mark, I'm wondering, have you ever looked into the Abyssal Plain? As they cover more than 50% of the Earth's surface, and by Wikipedia's own definition, they are the flattest and smoothest regions on Earth. Wouldn't this alone prove at the very least that the Earth is not a sphere? If over half of its surface is flat and smooth, how could it be a sphere? As far as I know, water takes on the shape of its container, so therefore the water would be flat also. Thanks, Dave. I have not looked into the Abyssal Plain. But that's an interesting take, and I will I'll do some research on it. This one's called United Nations. <clears throat> Mark, love listening to your show. As a result of listening a few nights ago, I picked up on the scent of a rabbit trail. I was thinking about the UN emblem and decided I don't think they do anything by accident. So I went on to look into the designer of the emblem. Below, I copied and pasted a couple things that caught my eye. I'm sure you get hundreds of emails a day, so I'll be surprised if this one catches your eye, but I couldn't not try. I really feel like there is really more to it, but kind of got stuck. Maybe it's all old stuff too, but I'm pretty new to this being awake thing. Anyway, thanks for your time and for helping to teach me just an insane amount that I may not have ever noticed on my own. God bless Crystal Goldstein. And the line is from... Uh, it's a wiki entry. Oliver Lincoln Lundquist, a talented architect and industrial designer, worked for the Office at Strategic Services, otherwise known as the OSS, the CIA's predecessor during World War II, and led the team that designed the official United Nations emblem. In 1945, the U.S. State Department asked the OSS to help create a graphics for the UN conference where the UN charter was drafted. Lundquist's team set out to create a lapel pin for the delegates that could serve as their official form of identification. It was initially designed by another OSS officer, Donald McLaughlin, who worked for Lundquist as the director for graphics for the conference. This became the prototype for the UN logo you see today. During World War II, McLaughlin worked for the Office of Strategic Services, where he worked for Wild Bill Donovan, then head of the OSS's chief of graphics. During the war, his group used visual design to help present information that could be easily understood, including army orientation films and cigarette packages printed with instructions for derailing German trains. His team created the design for the courtroom used in the Nuremberg trials, as well as the visual displays used by the prosecution that helped obtain convictions of Nazi war criminals. And you could look that up if you want on Wiki. Interesting. <clears throat> Thank you very much for that. This one's called Big Flat Earth Results. <clears throat> Need some tea. Hey, Mark, just want to show you an interesting number I came across. <clears throat> I follow Stefan Molyneux on YouTube. He has about 600,000 subs. I did a quick search to see which videos of his has the highest view count. The first was the story of your enslavement with five and a half million. I'll attach a picture. If you go down his fifth video on his flat earth with is with is flat earth with 950,000 views. He has the largest philosophy show and this isn't a subject he ever really touched on other than this one video. This happens to be how I came across the topic. Ever since then, I've been hooked and follow you closely. Thanks for the great work, Trevor. Uh, awesome. Yeah, when, when Stefan did that, I knew, you know, again, with anybody that has a whole bunch of followers, you're going to cast a wide, wider net and that net is gonna pick up some people that really resonate with Flat Earth, so fantastic. This one's called, hello, Mark. This is Jay, second time emailer here. Hey, how's it going, Mark? My name is Jay, and this is my second time I'm emailing you with my thoughts. The first email that I've sent in, which was relatively short and casual email, actually got read on one of your email shows, which was cool. This email, however, is longer. 
I've been thinking about the most profound question that we flat earthers still cannot answer at the moment, which is the question of why. I've noticed that that's where all the Globers eventually land on at the end of their displays of cognitive dissonance. And understandably so, because where else would they go when their faith in science is destroyed by fact-checking the globe? I believe the amount of researchers that have been done, researches, researches that have been done is more than enough to convince any open-minded person that the shape of their world is not what they think it might be. But we can still not answer the question of why hide it. I believe that if the elites had found the true shape of our world, they could have very well turned the corners and declared the legitimacy of the flat earth and still keep most of their influences intact if they had actually tried. Why do I think so? To be honest, just my, just my gut feelings. There was no internet back then during the time of Operation High Jump. It had to be a now or never situation. Of course, the ripples of this giant wave would have wiped the academia clean of their misleading curriculum and caused a huge distraught in both the scientific and economic world. But this is the elites that we are talking about here. They would not have let go of their kung fu grip on the world because of a few thousands of suddenly unemployed astronomy professors and experts in the related fields. Maybe I'm underestimating the impact of the discovery of Flat Earth would have made in the 1940s or 1950s, but let's face it, it would have been a lot easier to pull the trigger back then than doing it in the current time period. We still need the governing bodies of the nations around the world, even on a Flat Earth. But for whatever reason, they didn't pursue down that road. Maybe they simply couldn't afford to. You sometimes talk about the previous civilizations and the possible original discovery of the flat earth by them, which could have led to their ultimate dis demise at the end. What if the elites had simultaneously found out that we were not supposed to discover the true shape of our world along with the flat earth truth? What if the discovery of the flat earth truth is the beginning of the end of civilization. Personally, though, I believe in providence. Whether it comes from a deity or other things not does not trouble me as much. But man, the distances that the elites are willing to go to prevent the truth from getting out s disturbs me. So, what is your opinion on this matter, Mark? Could it be that the elites are actually trying to steer away the world from being annihilated so they can keep being the kings of the world? Or am I just being cuckoo this evening? Haha. <laughs> just something to think about, I guess. Thanks, and keep it flat. J. P.S. How does the heck does Patricia keep getting more beautiful? <laughs> CGI technicians must be stepping up their games. It's funny. Uh, yeah, again, I've, I've said since day one, which is Flat Earth is just a, a bigger part of, of something else that's coming. And we have a choice. Are we going to turn it into a new golden age, or are we going to turn it into a big tragedy tale? I don't, I don't know. I, I think it's still up in the air which way it could go. Uh, tragedies win awards, but a happy ending, they're always a crowd favorite. So, don't know. Don't know. It could, I think it's up to us in the end. We're going to be the ones that have to decide this. Do we, do we bury this thing? Do we auger it into the ground? Or do we move forward and, and have our civilization go to a new pinnacle and then move on to a different civilization? Don't know. This email is called New Convert. Mark, I'm sold. I need to tell you that you and Rob Skiba are doing a great job. Thank you. Joseph Moreno. Awesome. Joseph, thank you very much for that. This one's called It's Flat. Go figure. Hi, Mark. I am a 43-year-old European businessman with a few million air miles under my belt. Originally, I'm from Germany, but I have been living abroad since the age of 18, so I don't really consider myself German, more like a European. Anyway, I have followed you, Patricia, Allegedly Dave, Eric Dubé, ODD, Jaronism, Globebusters, and the likes. I've tried to find flaws in the fact that there is no real proof for a globe Earth. I have found none, except some CGI, low-quality moving pictures, and whatever else the space agencies around the world hand out to the public. And that's where one problem presents itself. How do Japanese, Russian, Chinese, Indian, and American space agencies agree on keeping the truth of flat earth for themselves? I think this is a viable question. Why would they all play along in this game? I understand that it is mathematically unlikely that the, Ur the earth has a curvature that should be applicable with the given earth's cir circumference. However, it seems undetectable. During the many flights that I have taken over the course of my career in motorsports, I have never been able to detect a curvature when looking out the window, even as a kid. 
it seems that you always tr tend to try and look for that elusive curvature when you look out the airplane window. Now, having said that, have you heard of a company called Worldview Enterprises? It is a company that I have found online which offers a different approach to the high altitude travel without any rocket engines, jet engines, and the like. Have a look and let me know what you think. On another note, I do enjoy your regular videos on YouTube as well as the videos that your compatriots post. I've always thought of myself to be an educated, literate, and intelligent human being, but when I looked at the fact that there might be something out there that is absolute bollocks, I do think what a dumb schmuck I must be for not noticing it. How can it be that such a big lie, much like 9-11, is kept secret and no one who has the knowledge of the truth and maybe even some proofs comes forward? Those are the main questions that I need answered. I can't imagine how thousands of people can keep such a secret. I mean, I fail within my small family to keep a secret, let alone a huge company with thousands and thousands of employees. And then again, the fact that other space agencies echo what NASA claims to be the truth. I'll stop here and keep some food for thought for the next time, in case you find it interesting enough to actually read through this email. I wish you much success in unveiling the truth. God bless, Guido. Hmm. Awesome. Good email. This one is called Cron Gracie. Comes out of, as a flat earther. And he says, Look, Mark, last night on Eddie Bravo's podcast, he talks about how he's been looking into this for a while. The last 20 minutes of the broadcast is him talking about how this is more important than his rep reputation and career. That this needs to get out. Scary, dude. This is getting big. I know you have an optimistic outlook, but I don't see the powers that should not be, how Patricia always says it, going down without a fight. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, they, yeah. Uh, rule, rule, general guidelines say that they will put up a fight. No question. But how they will take the fight to us, don't know yet. This one's called Cleveland TV Talks Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. Wanted to let you know this morning the local Fox television station, Fox 8 in Cleveland, mentioned Flat Earth on the morning show. In a segment called Plugged In, they commented about how Kyrie Irving and Shaquille O'Neal's statements. Have you stated the network broadcast stations have yet to touch this? Yes, I have. To my knowledge, no local station has touched this even with Kyrie's comments. Keep up the great work staying flat, Frank. Yeah, the, the major network news shows like ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, CNN, they have not run a story on it. Although Sports Center has gone on it, which is very cool. This one's called New York Plates. Hi Mark, been a fan since the summer of 2016. I went to bed one night listening to YouTube and woke up the next morning. I'm hearing this strange talk about you know what. When I got home that night, I brought them up again and listened some more. Between you, Rob Skiba, and others, I'm becoming more and more convinced. I have never been one to subscribe to any of the theories out there. Okay, I'm convinced on this one. I just have no one yet to discuss it with. Still in the closet, though at this point, I, as I brought it up at work the next day and of course got laughed at, I had not yet heard your advice on not using the F word. Interesting thought, a four-letter word beginning with F. Hmm, certainly a foul word for some. Thank you for the clues. I really appreciate all the work that must have gone into them. Regarding license plates, I got on the New York City DMV website and started typing in different permutations and found a few that were not taken. I don't plan on getting a custom plate, but I wondered if you would be interested in any that came up as available or do you prefer actual plates there in use? If the plate is available, they provide you with a JPEG and I saved them. I came up with a few, including a couple of zingers in tribute to NDT and Bill Nye. Best regards and no curve. Thanks, David. Uh, yeah, if you're going to get a plate and you have a screenshot of it, send me the screenshot. But if you don't get the plate, it, eventually, you've got to order the plate, basically. I don't want people just creating screen. I mean, screenshots are fine, but I, I want people to get actual plates. You know, commit if you're going to do it. They're not that expensive. And, you know, put yourself out there if you're, if you're going to do it. So you can send me the temporary plate until you get your real plate. But don't send me just temporary plates if you're not going to use them. And eventually, if I don't get the real plates but from some of these guys in a couple of months, because I know it takes a while to, to get some of these custom plates, depending on what state you're in, then I will pull them from the slideshow. So send me the real plates when you get a chance. This one's called, Is This Why? Mark, regarding FE, is this the reason for such a backlash to Trump becoming president? An outsider to the Flat Earth cover-up who must now be let in, although it appears they have no intention of filling him in. 
I'm so new to the Flat Earth realization. I only had the eye, my eyes opened on Friday. My tears come easily to me right now, both as a result of the shattering of what I believed and as a reestablishment that God is the reality after all. Thank you for the video, Francis Herceg, H-E-R-C-E-G, from Carnegie, Pennsylvania. You are very welcome, Francis. This one's called Cliff High Comments Regarded to Flat Earth, Related to Flat Earth. Cliff High, I don't know who Cliff High is, made two comments recently related to Flat Earth. Cliff said he admired the work being done by Flat Earth researchers. He said that it didn't matter if the Earth was a flat Earth or a globe, but he still admired the work being done by the Flat Earth research community. In one of his most recent videos, Cliff said he had thought he had enough web bot data to do entire programs and report on Antarctica. Cliff said his web bots show that there was enough new data coming from Antarctica to keep researchers busy for a hundred years analyzing the data. David. Wow. That's from David Collins. Awesome. This one's called I Set Out to Debunk Flat Earth. Mark. You know how this ends, right? I spent most of this weekend listening to you on podcasts, watching your YouTube videos, researching for myself, and ultimately coming to the conclusion that the masses have been tricked into thinking we live on a globe. The trickery wasn't even that good once you start looking in the right places and asking the right questions. Some of it is so obvious. Some of it is stuff I've questioned all my life, like why do we only ever see one side of the moon no matter where we are on Earth, even though Earth supposedly wobbles on its axis, even though the Earth's gravity allegedly has an effect on the moon. But the same people who apply Occam's razor to conspiracy theories would never accept the simple explanation. We only see one side of the moon because there is only one side. I am overwhelmed, liberated, scared, and lonely. There is no one I can tell about this. People would think I'm crazy. It's ironic because I'm a lawyer and I have no faith in my colleagues to look at the evidence instead of relying on someone else's conclusions. I would love to talk to you sometime. I have many questions and observations. I hope you respond or even call. My number is, there's his number. Thanks for all the information, Jennifer. All right, I'm probably gonna have to write her and say, look, I read this on, on an email show. This one's called, thank you. Dear Mark, the reason I am writing to you is just in order to say thank you and encourage you to go on with your research and your revealing and telling the truth with confidence and persistence. I watched your video and read the comments beneath and I was really scared and disappointed and actually shocked with the blindness and ignorance of the majority of people and thought you might have read these stupid comments too and to be honest I felt so sorry and felt so ashamed. I really felt ashamed for this people because you have definitely not deserved this. You have invested your time in researching and making documentations and revealing the truth about Mother Earth you have taken care to wake the sleeping population from their sleep and help them stop dreaming their lives away. You've made an attempt to help the blind to be able to see again, and this is how they thank you. Concerning the flat earth, well, I believe it immediately. I, and I need no evidence. I've talked to people, asked questions, compared facts on the past. Well, one thing I know for sure is that everything they tell us, and I mean absolutely everything, is a lie, a big, pretty lie. They show news for which they have organizers, minor roles, people to play their theater. So if the earth would be a ball, this would be the only thing ever they are telling us the truth about, really. For me, I need no other evidence in order to believe that the earth is flat. It is enough, they tell us it's not. And concerning the questions why they are lying to us, I know they have enough to gain. Not money, but slaves. Exactly the same people who are posting these stupid comments beneath your video and others like them. People who believe their lies without thinking for themselves. But that's how they've conditioned us for centuries, isn't it? Be a good part of the system. Work for us. Give us your best years and the most important. Don't you ever ask questions or do research on your own and don't dare to use your brain. We supply you with everything you may need. And then when you are old and useless and have wasted your life obeying the system and after we have chewed you and drunken your juice, we will spit the rest of you out and let you die in misery. It's so sad that people don't open their eyes, don't wake up from their sleep and don't start using their brains. I am so deeply moved from your revealing and I am so sad about these dead men walking around that I say thank you and please don't give up. Is there something we, else we could do to spread the truth? Maybe there's still hope for mankind. Kind regards and warm greetings from the Bulgarian Black Sea Coast, Maria Mitterhauser. That's awesome. Thank you, Maria. It's a nice letter. This one's called, I Set Out to Debunk Flat Earth. 
And I think I read this one. I think when she sent this one to me twice. Yes, she did. Sorry about that. This one's called Estonian TV Tower, seen from Finland, 80 kilometers away. And I left you a short, short message. So you guys can look that up if you want. Estonian TV Tower, seen from Finland, 80 kilometers away. Awesome. Thank you for that. This one's called Illumination. Hi, Mark, this may be old hat to you, but if the sun was 93 million miles away, wouldn't it illuminate the whole of the globe, Earth, facing it to different levels of intensity? A closer, smaller sun would only light up smaller portions of the Earth as we daily witness. Keep up the good work, Len Morning. M Morning. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And videos have been made on that. This uh, second one. Question about the sun. Hi, Mark, thanks for all your work. All the flat Earth models I have seen about the sun traveling basically along the lines of latitude with the the Tropic of Capricorn being the most southern. If this were true, then people on the same lines of longitude looking at the sun at 12 noon should prove this out. The guy in the north, like me, would see the sun to the south, and the guy in the Antarctic would see the sun in the north. Seems like an easy thing to verify. Thoughts, cheers, open eyes. His name's Rod, actually. Uh, I... If you want to look up any stuff on the sun, go to two channels. Look at DITRH, his work on the sun right now, and actually three channels. DITRH, Zeteticism.com, and Rob Skiba. They all do wonderful work on the sun. So check that out when you get a chance. This one's called, Mark, please read on air announcing our meetup. There is a meetup. Where is this meetup? This is March 27th, 2017. At the Rally King Brewing Company, that's 1624 South LeMay Avenue, Fort Collins, Colorado. It's a flat earth and other forbidden topics, similar to the one I did in Nanaimo just yesterday, which seemed like a lot of fun. So yeah, Monday, March 27th, which is tomorrow. So I better get this sucker up right now. Uh, at 6 o'clock p.m. at Rally King Brewing Company in Fort Collins, Colorado. So anyone's listening to that, check it out. And I will definitely get this sucker up as soon as I'm done with it. Oh, well, if you want to call the guy that's hosting it, his number is 970-218-3638. That's 970-218-3638. His name is John Vanuck, V-N-U-K. So I will put this sucker up right away. This one's called Awakened and Happily Flat. Mark, I did not come to think of the flat earth because of the video or book. Not one caused me to think it about thinking about it. Not no one. A simple observation struck me. Obvious. It was like being slapped in the face with a cold fish. <laughs> you don't hear that very often. My life partner has children who live in Japan. Her daughter came to visit us in Portland, Oregon. When the day came and she boarded the plane to travel back to Tokyo, I asked, Honey, how long will it take her to get back? When she said something like 14 to 17 hours, something struck me as odd. Suddenly, it never occurred to me in all my then 51 years of life a simple fact. If the earth spins west to east, it shouldn't take that long to travel to Tokyo or anywhere. Then I thought about helicopters. If a helicopter hovers and the earth is spinning, one should be able to hover in New York City and in a few hours the Midwest arrive. Then I asked, why can't I feel the spin when spinning on an amusement park ride? is so obvious. This bothered me for several days. Then I determined something is wrong. The earth isn't spinning. Then I searched the topic and found that I was not mad. I had, by grace, broken free from my conditioning and was able to entertain the thought that the world on which I live is different than I was taught. For me, the final proof is that I can see with my simple naked eye objects that should be, according to the mathematical calculations described by those holding to the globe earth, hidden behind the curvature of the earth. Every other proof the hundreds that have been codified are just icing on the cake. My backstory, I am an educated veteran pastor of 23 years. I served within the Southern Baptist Convention. I've been awarded the Church, Church Health Award by Dr. Rick Warren. I was mentored personally by Adrian Rogers and, the, and W.A. Criswell. I reached the top 20% in the SBC. I've led the leaders and taught the teachers. I'm a sci-fi geek and Star Trek fanatic who always dreamed of going where no man has gone before. There is much more to be told and much more to be said on my story and my journey. I would very much like to share my story with your audience in the hopes of helping others on many fronts. Blessings and peace, Keith E. Powell. Awesome. How many more can we do here? Do we have time? Uh, one more? One more maybe? Quick flat earth question. 
Well, we're going to do a couple more apparently because this is quick. Mark, can't someone go buy some GoPro cams or even buy used cams? Buying used would be cheaper than and give them to SpaceX so they could send them to the moon on their moon mission next year. Oh, I think they're going to have a few cameras. Question is, will they be disabled when, if they do, they do this mission when the whole thing goes wrong and turns into an Apollo 13 sequel? That's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking might happen. This one's from Cody. It's called Flat Earth. Mark, I've seen your videos on YouTube. I'm very interested in the topic Flat Earth. would like to know more about it. I'm really into conspiracies. And what I sent him was the Flat Earth shortlist for new people. It's a playlist on my, my YouTube channel. I send that to anybody that's into it new. It's got a whole bunch of videos from different people. But in fact, I, I don't even know if I'm on that list anymore because I substitute. It's all, all sorts of different videos from ranging from five minutes to a couple hours. Okay, can we get in one more? And clear out that day. Uh, yeah, this will be the end. This was from James. Hello, I often email you small tidbits of what's on my mind at the time. I can't seem to get this one out. So I'm emailing you to try to get this information to you so you can push these two facts. First off, no one ever speaks about the velocity that we are told that the Earth is going through space. Now, I'm not saying that this is never brought up, but it's never pushed to the point that it really registers with people as it is the data fact that tipped me over to the fact of the moon landings and space as we have been told are not true. How the heck can satellites be in our outer atmosphere or higher and still be keeping up with the velocity of the Earth? How can rockets go out of our atmosphere into the vacuum of space and keep up with the velocity of the planet? It can't happen. I believe that there is one point to the flat Earth that will prove it is flat. Push the fact that we can't find the curve. Second, I believe that there is one point that will prove space is not what we've been told. Anything that would breach our atmosphere could not keep up with the velocity of the Earth through space at 66,000 miles per hour. I'm looking online at the data regarding direct television satellites, it, and it's on space.com, uh, that they are expected to be as high as 22,000 miles and as low as 3,100 miles. If these satellites are in that range, they are well out of the thermosphere and must also be traveling through space at the same rate of the Earth, or the Earth would leave them in the proverbial space dust. This is preposterous and extremely out of the question. No flat earth mainstream person seems to be pushing this major fact. If a satellite is 3,000 miles above the earth, it would be out of the atmosphere and not only needing to be traveling around the sphere, but also be as fast as the sphere is traveling through space. I'm literally beside myself at the fact that this major piece of data seems to be overlooked. And it is for me, the final nail in the fake space coffin. I think that the two issues, curvature not being found and the speed of the earth traveling through space should be the main points of proving the flat earth and the fake space data. I know that there is a huge debate going on, but all the conversations are now just repeating themselves. And I feel these two aspects are being completely overlooked. Even more so, the speed of the earth through space is more overlooked than the curvature. I watched Gravity again about three weeks or so ago. Great realistic graphics, but they don't show you that the earth is traveling at 66,000 miles an hour through space. And the ISS in the movie sure does appear to be in space. If the heliocentric model had the Earth at rest and not moving through space at tremendous speeds, then I just might have bought the heliocentric model. But the velocity of the Earth shatters the model right in front of us, and we don't even realize that is the case. Thanks for your time, and I hope perhaps these two points could be the forefront of the Flat Earth movement as it moves forward. Stay true to yourself. Thanks for your time. F.E. James, otherwise known as Flat Earth James. And with that one, yeah, we'll end it. Again, if it, people want to email me the questions, I, I will answer what I can. Don't make them too long if, if you can help it. Try to leave math out of it because if I can't read it, if it's not, if I can't put a visual to it, can't project it on, onto the audio, then I, I'm probably not going to read it. The email address is msargent23 at comcast.net. Uh, you can also call me at 303-494-6631. Leave a message because uh, most of the time I have to screen the calls. Anyway, guys, stay flat.